Doc here reviewing for exam one by request. We have a student requesting the big four properties of waves which are covered in chapter C and the first is reflection. The law of reflection. Well reflection means that sound waves, light waves, water waves, any kind of wave, they'll bounce off barriers. So here we have an example of a wave coming in, hitting this barrier and bouncing off. You can think of this as a flashlight hitting, heading toward a mirror and bounce off the mirror. Uh, the example I gave with sound was the football game at the University of Maryland where the Terrapins did something good and everyone cheered and the cheers came across the campus, hit this brick wall, came down toward me and I heard the football game in front of me, the cheers, after I had past the football field that was to my left or behind me. A very, very strange effect. And here's a whispering chamber, a nice uh, special shape room so that you have two points A and B where if you speak at A, sound, no matter where it hits the wall, will reflect back to B and you can hear whispering from A to B and vice versa while at other places in the room you may not hear anything at all. For refraction, this deals with the speed of a wave traveling faster in a different medium, but what happens is the medium is, let's say, cooler in one area and hotter in the other, so you have a different medium, but it's still air. So what happens at night, as you'll see in a second, gets you a nice effect based on this temperature variation and speed variation. Let's look at this for a second here. Freezing temperatures, speed of sound 331 meters per second. At room temperature, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. So that's why we give you in class 340 meters per second as the speed to remember for speed of sound. And at 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going at 349 meters per second. So the speed varies, see. Technically, these are different media, a hotter medium uh, here than a colder medium. And the air will do this at night. We have a temperature inversion. We have the cool air at the bottom, the hot air at the top. In the daytime, when the asphalt gets hot because the sun's beating down on it, at the ground you have a hot air layer and then is cooler up here. At night, the reverse takes place. There is no sun and the warm, hot asphalt cools off as the hot air rises. So we call this a temperature inversion. It's inverted from what you normally expect during the day. So we have a sound wave coming out of here. We make these sound wave sketches very, very easily uh, if we let a crest be a line. If you look at this from the top, then you would see a line, a crest here, water, uh, say wave coming into the shore uh, here to the right, and then you would have a valley and then a crest and a valley and a crest. So just think of this as lines for the crest and nothing here for the troughs. So if you say hello, then the sound goes out as a sphere from your uh, head. And since the hot air allows sound to travel faster, the top part of these crests go faster and faster, get ahead of themselves. And then here, look at that. It's like the sound here will focus or come back down across the street. Here's the street, there's your neighbor across the street, then you're talking about your neighbor and you think you can't hear your neighbor. You just parked your car and you didn't hear these folks talking. You join your family members, you keep talking about the neighbor, but you don't realize that even though you can't hear it in the middle of the street, the sound can be heard across the street. You might say sound carries at night. Well, it's refraction at work. If we go to diffraction, the third, diffraction is simply the bending of waves through openings, like this one here, around corners, and around obstacles. You can verify all these so easily. Just uh, say hello at home where there's a doorway and someone sitting on a chair around the corner there will be able to hear you say hello. The sound will spread out. Here if your friend goes around the corner of your house or a building at the school, if you say hey come back, they'll hear you. The sound waves will get around. These sketches are showing you how the sound is doing that, how the sound is diffracting. 
And here, if someone says hello or whispers and there's a tree here, if you're right on the other side of the tree, you'll be able to hear the person. Or if you simply turn your head so that you talk away from the person, the sound will wrap around your head and get to the person. The, the last is interference. The interference involves two waves that overlap. If the two waves coincide where the crest meets the crest and the trough meets the trough, we say we have constructive interference and we hear a louder sound. If the waves overlap so that the crest meets a trough and the, uh, here trough meets the crest, they cancel. Think of this as having your eardrum you know, wanting to be pushed in and then out, plus minus. And here, this wave wants to do the opposite. This one wants to push your ear in, eardrum in. This one wants to pull it out. The eardrum does nothing, so they cancel. These uh, waves are said to be out of phase, or sometimes you hear the terminology 180 degrees out of phase because when you have a crest, that is considered 180 degrees, and then another 180 degrees, they think of 360 as being the whole wave. So if you shift away by half a wavelength, they say it's shifted by 180 degrees. or in other words, you could just say it's like out of phase. That does a trick also. If you look at this uh, diagram, this is refers to an experiment we did in class where we crossed some of the wire the wires here. One of the pair, one wire here. We we crossed this one so that we, at first we had uh, in class uh, one speaker doing one thing, but then we had another one either working with it to get you two crests going to your ear or to cancel. So this was an experiment where we looked at the interference where here we had one speaker on by itself and then if we crossed the wires here, you know, plugged them in the wrong way so that they would work against each other, the two would actually sound softer. But if we put the wires together here the way you should, then they would work together and you would hear it like loud, the loudest. So this is the loudest medium was one by itself and then two working against each other was even like worse. Don't tell me any favors you're going to work against me. I'd rather do it by myself, so to speak. Uh, the last was a demonstration with uh, a little two-inch speaker and as you push, uh, the speaker pushes uh, out to the right, it sends a crest to the right, but then out the back it would be the opposite, send the trough. But since diffraction occurs, this can come around the other side, around the obstacle, and that's not good because that'll tend to interfere. So by putting a baffle here, when I put the little speaker up to a little hole on a piece of wood, the sound was so much better because it prevented what was going out the rear from coming around and interfering with the uh, forward going wave. So this involves the principle of interference plus diffraction. The diffraction when this wave wants to wrap around go the other way and then when the crest over here meets that trough that would be interference. A nice little experiment which you can read about in the book and that concludes our review.